Hello everyone and welcome to our final demo presentation. Today we will be discussing a hierarchical mixture of experts approach for human activity classification from images. We are supervised by Dr. Sharif Salama and Dr. Mohammed Mustafa. The team consists of four members, Abdurrahman Diyar, Ali Anani, Ramaz Musa and myself. The outline for the presentation proceeds as follows. We firstly describe the problem and the motivation behind our proposed solution, providing a literature review for previous approaches tackling the problem. We also describe our own solution with a level of details, as well as the prediction pipeline and a sample demonstration of the project. We then present the results obtained from different experiments that we conducted. We take a look at the explainability outcome associated with the project. And finally, we outline the values and the future work proposals. The problem description for our project is to build a pipeline that takes a photo of a person doing a certain activity, and this pipeline should correctly classify the type of activity this person is doing, while also providing some explanation of how or why the pipeline reached this conclusion. The motivation of our solution relied on the following question. Does dividing or simplifying the problem for a pipeline improve its accuracy? The question drove two main approaches that we adopted. Firstly, problem division, where we divided the problem on many semantic experts, each looking at the problem from a different aspect. This way, we can extract several sets of semantically driven features that are related to the problem at hand. The second approach was problem space division, where we divide the problem space itself in a divide and conquer fashion, such that every expert is responsible for classifying a certain category of actions in a hierarchical fashion. Driven by these two approaches, our project revolves around using a hierarchical mixture of experts where each expert specializes in a subspace from the input space of a subproblem for explainable human activity classification. For that, we will use the BU11 dataset. The Boston University dataset BU11 is the largest web action image dataset to date. It was collected from uh, web sources such as Google and was manually filtered for the correct label for every image. It has 101 classes, which are divided into five main superclasses for human activities. These are human-human interaction, human-object interaction, body motion only, playing musical instruments, and sports. Uh, it has a large uh, size of 23,800 uh, images, averaging around 235 images per class. We divide the literature survey into three parts. The first one is concerned with the notion of semantic features. The first paper aimed to detect relationships between people and images using a domain-based approach. Such relationships could be like father-child relationship, uh, siblings relationship, etc. And instead of using end-to-end -end models, the authors imposed domain knowledge from the psychology field to improve the accuracy. They developed models to extract domain features like age, gender, clothing, etc. Then these features were input to a model that detects the social relation in the image. The second paper aimed to develop a standardized representation for images and videos for scene understanding. They provided features from different extractors like ours, and these extractors contained an object extractor, which was a VGG trained on the entire ImageNet dataset, a scene extractor, also a VGG trained on the Places uh, 205 dataset, and the generic low-level feature extractor. This collection of features was called the OSF streams. They were then to be reduced in a semantic fusion network, as shown here, where the last layer is the classification layer for the classes of ActivityNet or FCBID datasets. We had a correspondence with the authors of this paper, and we contacted them to obtain the training parameters uh, for the extractors or the extractors themselves. This is mainly because training on the entire ImageNet or Places uh, dataset would be insanely time consuming. They responded promptly but did not provide us with any of their parameters or models, yet they provided us with references to pre-trained models for the scene stream, which we use in our current pipeline, as I will explain later. The second part of our literature survey is concerned with the idea of mixture of experts. The first paper in this part uh, was talking about utilizing a mixture of experts approach for gender, ethnicity, and facial pose classification. In this paper, the authors implemented many different decision trees and SVMs, and each of these models was having the same objective, but trained on a different subset of the data then the output of all of these models would be input to a judge model that optimizes the final classification uh, of every 
task. Another paper we surveyed was concerned with the classification of ECG arrhythmia by using a network based on a mixture of experts and negatively correlated learning. The last part of our literature survey was concerned about papers uh, that generally speak about uh, human activities. These papers introduced us to many approaches and provided us with more insight on the problem. They included different topics like classification from smartphone sensory data, uh, real-time classification of human activities using convolutional neural networks. They also included many divide and conquer approaches and mixture of expert approaches. And they also included uh, the usage of deep learning for activity classification in general and so on. In our architecture, we incorporate five semantic experts because the human ability to understand and recognize activities from images does not only depend on the main act itself, but it also integrates other information sources, such as the context behind the image, the objects in the image, and so on. So we try to provide this context to our models by using the following experts. The first expert is an object classifier based on the VGD16 architecture. It's trained on the ImageNet 1000 dataset. It produces 4096 low-level features, we will call them early features, and it classifies 1000 specific objects and we will call this the late features. The second expert is also a VGD16 classifier, but it's trained as a pre-classifier on the BU101 dataset, our dataset, and it has 1496 early features, and the output is five human activity categories. The next expert is the scene expert, which uses a ResNet50 uh, architecture, and it classifies 365 scenes from the Places365 dataset, and it produces 2048 early features as well. Then we have the YOLO v3 uh, expert. It's a state-of-the-art real-time object detection system that can classify up to 80 object types. It is used as an end-to-end -end component to output the frequency of those 80 objects. We also have the OpenPose expert, which is an end-to-end real-time multi-person human joint annotator. It can detect the human body and hand, and it can also detect key points from the face and the foot. It has in total 201 features that we extract, and they are detected on every image. So how do we mix these experts? Previously, we were adopting the early fusion approach, where we take the low-level features from the expert extractors as input to a classifier, as seen here on the figure on the right. Another way is to use the predictions from the experts themselves, not the low-level features. For example, we have the 1000 objects from the VGG16 uh, expert, we have the 365 scenes, and the five action categories from the pre-classifiers. Uh, this provides a more explainable set of features uh, that have a more semantic meaning than the low-level features from the early fusion, and it reduces the model size because less features are used overall, and hence this speeds up the prediction. In fact, we use them both. At the input level, we have the five semantic experts that we talked about earlier, each of them outputting a set of features that are helpful for the overall human activity classification task. The features map on the right shows the type and the size of every expert's output corresponding to its color. We then choose a combination of the experts' outputs to be concatenated and passed to the rest of the pipeline. We experimented with all combinations to analyze the effect of the semantic fusion of early and late features on the overall accuracy of the model. More on this in the results section. After combining the features and producing the concatenated feature vector, we pass it to our end-to-end -end classifier, which is a fully connected neural network that gets trained on the 101 classes of our dataset. Our hierarchical architecture contains two main components. The feature fusion component we just described, and the hierarchical classification component. In this pipeline, we divide our problem space into five main subspaces, or categories, and assign a classifier for every one of these categories. Each classifier is trained separately on the corresponding data for its category, and the superclass classifier is trained as a selector for the main category of every input image. It then selects the appropriate classifier and passes the selected features to it. The prediction vector then receives the output of the activated classifier and accordingly outputs the class uh, the image belongs to out of the 101 classes. Another way to mix the experts is using the network fusion approach described in the OSF paper. In this approach, each set of features, whether early or late, is passed into a simple linear layer with trainable parameters that adjusts its dimensionality, whether it uses or increases the dimensionality. This controls the dimensionality of the features input to the classifier, it allows unifying the contribution of every expert in the feature vector, and it potentially reduces the model size while maintaining comparable accuracy. We merged this approach 
the network fusion approach in our architectures. For example, this is the end-to-end -end architecture with the feature extraction component replaced by the network fusion approach we just described. We can also include it in our uh, hierarchical architecture. This is, for example, the hierarchical architecture with the same component replacing the feature extraction and selection uh, component. To interface with our model, we implemented a prediction pipeline. This pipeline has the following, a command line interface, which takes the directory containing the images needed to predict the activities in, and outputs the corresponding class for every image. It also has optional expla explainability, which means you can also pass the explain argument to let the pipeline output the explainability provided from all experts. This is essential for several reasons. One can know exactly why the model classifies an image to a certain class based on those explainability features. And if the model does not classify an image correctly, we can know where it failed exactly. The pipeline also provides timing benchmarks, which shows the prediction time for an image and the whole dataset. Uh, it also provides evaluation metrics uh, by showing the top five accuracy and showing also the top one accuracy. Um, this is an example for our explainability output from the prediction pipeline. Uh, this image belongs to the playing cello class, and as we can see, it got correctly classified as playing cello from the labels section with a very high probability. Uh, as for the explainability features, uh, VGG16 detected that, the, that there is a cello or a violin cello in this image. Uh, the scene expert also detected that this is a music studio scene, which makes sense. And the action expert uh, detected uh, that this is a playing musical instrument uh, class, which makes sense because this is also the super class uh, for the playing cello class in our uh, dataset. This is another example from our prediction pipeline. Uh, this image belongs to the class of apply eye makeup. However, it got wrongly classified into blow dry hair. Uh, and now we can know why it got wrongly classified. Uh, the VGG16 uh, detected that there is a hairspray in the image, which makes sense for it to be classified into blow dry hair. Also, the scene expert detected that this is a beauty salon, which also explains uh, the output class. Now we show our overall results regarding the best performing models. We can see that the late early MEXO features beats all other semantic fusion types in both the end-to-end -end and hierarchical pipelines with accuracies 88.3% and 86.15% respectively. It also beats the best accuracy by our baseline, which is the VGG16, by 2.75%. We can observe that the early fusion type beats the late fusion type consistently across both pipelines. Although the late features are more explainable, they are a slight trade-off of accuracy by 1.28%. Moreover, although the hierarchical model exploits more specialized classifiers, one per each class, it consistently underperforms with respect to the end-to-end -end pipeline. This could be attributed to the propagated error from the pre-classifier to the subclassifiers, which hinders the accuracy of the model. In fact, even though our initial plan was hierarchical centric, the end-to-end -end pipeline with the action expert alongside the rest of the semantic experts provides the same level of explainability of the hierarchical model with a better accuracy. So to further evaluate the effect of the semantic fusion uh, feature fusion types and the used experts on the model's accuracy, we show the combinations of these two and their corresponding end-to-end -end and hierarchical accuracies in the following slides. So these are the accuracy results of early fusion. The best performing early fusion model uses the combination of VGG16, scene and action experts with the end-to-end -end pipeline, essentially scoring an accuracy of 87.58%. The reason why the open pose and YOLO experts are omitted is because they're end-to-end -end components, which only enables us to get their late features. To closely observe the effect of adding semantic experts, the highest accuracy of VGG16 alone is 85.55% in the end-to-end -end pipeline. While if the input feature vector also receives more semantic features such as scene and action, the accuracy is improved by nearly 2.03% to 87.58%. So these are the late fusion results. The best performing late fusion model uses the combination of VGG16, scene, action, open pose, and YOLO experts with the end-to-end -end pipeline, essentially scoring an accuracy of 86.3%. And also the trend of increasing the number of experts being positively correlated with accuracy still stands. Uh, so these are the results for the early late fusion. 
The best performing early late mixture fusion model scores an accuracy of 88.3% using the end-to-end -end pipeline. It's clear that the overall performance of the mixed early and late features fusion beats each of them used alone. However, the downside of this model is that it's significantly slower due to the feature size. So these are the results for the neural network fusion paradigm. Uh, the neural network layer sizes for each expert are shown in the table above. And the best performing NN fusion of early and late features uses the combination of VGG16, CN Action, and Open Pose experts with the end-to-end -end pipeline, essentially scoring an accuracy of 87.2%. The best accuracy in the hierarchical model is 85.31%. The end-to-end -end accuracy here is very close to the early end-to-end -end accuracy, using three experts only, which was 87.58%. Even though the feature dimensionality here is approximately equal to one early expert only. This high accuracy alongside lower dimensionality is attributed to having the neural network layers optimizing the contribution of each expert. Uh, now I present to you a qualitative and high-level summary of our findings. First, the accuracy is very comparable across all our models. The range of the best results is around 2%. Second, the higher the accuracy, the bigger the model, and hence higher memory and more time is needed for prediction. Third, the late fusion provides best explainability because all the features are semantically self-explanatory and hence humanly understandable. However, other approaches are explained by our pipeline through obtaining the corresponding predictions from experts for every set of low-level features. Fourth, early and mixed fusions provide the best accuracy due to the usage of low-level features that provide more information for the prediction. Fifth, the network fusion provides an in-between compromise with regards to all aspects. Uh, accuracy is very close to early, with memory it's very close to the late fusion. Sixth, the hierarchical architecture has no improvement over the end-to-end -end architecture. Uh, here we show you the semantic associations that we provide, uh, where we show the items that have the highest probability to appear in a certain class. So if we ex examine the object's associations, we can see for the first class, for instance, apply eye makeup, it's mostly associated with the appearance of a lipstick. And if we examine the same associations for the same, cl uh, same class, apply eye makeup, uh, it's mostly associated with the beauty salon. And the same uh, could be applied in a way that makes sense for the rest of the classes. Uh, these are the semantic associations that we extracted using our action expert, uh, which only classifies uh, five classes. Uh, so if we look at the apply eye makeup class that we inspected earlier, it's mostly uh, frequent with human object interaction. Uh, and also uh, basketball, for instance, it's under sports. Uh, Push-ups are body motion only. Uh, tennis swing is uh, associated with sports. And the rest also could be applied on the rest of the classes. So, for our reinforcement outcome, we provide a research paper. The current progress is that we finally have a first draft, it's done. What needs to be done is for the rest of the team to have a general revision of the entire paper, and afterwards, revision by the supervisors. So, to conclude, we remind you of our very first inspiration, which is the way humans recognize activities, which is not only based on the human pose, but also extends to recognizing the objects in the photo, scenes, and semantic components. We present our novel late early fusion using a mixture of semantic experts end to end model for the human activity classification task. The five semantic experts used provide context for the classification model more than the baseline model, which is the VGG16, and hence beating its accuracy. Those experts are action, scene, object, open pose, and YOLO. We also illustrate semantic relations between the human activity classes and the output from the semantic experts through our prediction pipeline which brings explainability to the user as to why an image is classified as a certain class. The pipeline allowed us to use end-to-end -end models, which are performed the hierarchical model and the baseline without compromising the explainability goal, hence optimizing both our accuracies and explainability. Though we experimented with the problem space division paradigm through the hierarchical architecture, it did not outperform the end-to-end -end models in terms of accuracy. In short, what we conclude is that the use of semantic features in the end-to-end -end model is our solution to the human activity classification task with both high accuracy and explainability. This brings us to the value behind our research. First, novelty. 
Our research paper proposes a novel approach, which is the early late semantic fusion to improve the state of the art result in the human activity classification paradigm. Secondly, the solution produces intermediate features that could help explain the prediction of the model rather than having an opaque end-to-end -end implementation. And this is guaranteed by our prediction pipeline. This brings us to modularity. Since experts do not need to reside on the same machine, we could delegate some computations on edge devices by pushing some light experts on the edge, for example. This could potentially be a privacy-preserving solution. We do not necessarily need to share the images with the main network at the server side. We just need the output of the experts. And lastly, the solution idea itself, regardless of the architecture, could be used for safety analytics by detecting certain activities from footages such as camera, security camera, for example. Another application is a photo album categorization application, which is basically categorizing the images on anyone's phone into certain categories that fall under the human activity classes. For our future work, we plan to expand our paradigm from images to videos by classifying sequences. Another aspect that we can work on is generalizing our pipeline. It's already generalized for experts through caching the dataset and interfacing with it, but it also needs to be generalized for different class hierarchies. Thirdly, we can also start packaging our model to be deployed on PIP or Conda or any other package manager. Also, we can investigate different hierarchies instead of the BU101 hierarchy. A final future work is to deploy our model as an API or a web application. For this to be done, we'll have to quantize our model and serve it in a hosted environment. Here are our references. Thank you for listening to our presentation and now we're open for your questions.